and we're moving on up and we meet our old friend, the Thunder Demon, but we're just gonna go right on by him. And look at all those bells going on in the background. That is extremely atmospheric, and if you don't think so, well, I think something is wrong with you. Really cool, especially for this kind of game. It's real early Game Boy Advance game, and they, they did a fairly good job with the atmosphere. And those Were Panthers, uh, those guys, don't get me started on them. They are extremely annoying. My advice is to toss a cross. Just about everything in this game can be solved with crosses. And you see these guys, they back up away from you so you can't hit them, and then they rush you for a little bit of damage. And go back here, I was like, I'm gonna kill this guy. But no, not happening. I was hoping they dropped the Thunderbird card, but no such luck. Going to the right. Gonna clear out these bloody swords first. They'd be uh, pretty annoying. Because we are going on another brain float excursion. And you don't need to see that. Just cut out all my failures right there. And just grab the MP upgrade. And now we are going back to the Mars and Mandragora combo for a specific reason later on. Um, I got really confused when I saw these two Thunder Demons right here. I thought the game was glitching out on me. As it turns out, the Thunder Demon from the room below actually is connected to the one above. And hey, Skeleton Bombers! These guys are back! Uh, not that that's a real good thing, but you know, familiar faces in unfamiliar places. Oh, say, hey, so the she heat shades. Hmm, excuse me right there. Um, yeah, the heat shades are back. They're still just as annoying, but not as bad, since we're not on moving platforms. That MP upgrade was pretty nice. It refilled our health, and even better than that, we leveled up. And as a bonus to that, we pick up a heart item, which lets us recover 10 hearts if we ever need to. Although I doubt I'll really use that very often. And you notice, you're starting to notice that the Chapel Tower, um, really focuses on you having to wall jump and mastering that. Uh, in the thread, someone said the wall jump was kinda messed up. I've never noticed that. I guess you could say that because of the little delay in the actual jumping, but, um, I really never had a problem with it as a kid, and even now. So, I don't know what's up with that. I just noticed, look at all that uh, stained glass in the background. Really, uh, really cool. Yeah, it really does set up the area as a once holy, holy ground, but, um, you know, it's some sort of dark sanctuary for all these demons and monsters. I, it's cliche, I know, of course, but, um, it's true. I think it's really atmospheric. All these marionettes here are just in the wrong places. Extremely annoying. And we're gonna get cursed again because of my foolishness. But that's not too big of a problem. As I'm going to remedy that shortly, right here. Drink a cure curse. And I move right along. You start to notice the areas begin to blend together. They all look very similar. I guess the Konami team did a decent job with remedying that, um, by mixing up the enemy types. But, uh, it's really not doing a whole lot for me, I gotta say. Man, just getting knocked back to all over the place by the, uh, Were animal family. They're really annoying. Especially those panthers. Right here. Take out this werebear, then the hyena before he can even get a chance to get off a shot at me, so I'm pretty good, pretty cool. And we'll dip right here, refill our MP, and head on over to the boss room. Except, we meet Hugh, and he just looks like he got his ass handed to him royally. And he cannot even get up, he is hurt pretty bad. 
So Nathan, being a cool guy he is, decides to take on this monster, take on this demon. And boy, is it a big demon. Welcome to the Adramelic fight, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. This is a stationary boss. Um, he does not move, and all you need to do is hit his head. This is some sort of giant ram. I did a little bit of research on him. Apparently, this guy is the High Chancellor of Satan's Court, um, according to a demonology book. But, um, right here, he's just a ram locked up, imprisoned by Dracula in his castle. And he's not very difficult. Um, he literally only has two attacks. If you're counting the bubbles, well, I'm sorry, these are very easy to get by. Um, and if you're any. If you're at least decent at platforming and dodging, uh, this is an extremely easy fight. I think I got hit only about five times by him. And what I'm gonna recommend is just toss your cross at this guy. Just toss him with a uh, with the fury, with the vengeance, with the passion, whatever. Float your boat. And just stay out of his way. Go over to the left if you need to, or the right if you want. Um, don't get close and learn how to use a slide to get uh, past these bubbles. Since those are probably the most annoying thing about this fight. That's why I have the Mars and Mandragora combo equipped. So I can avoid those. It's destroying real easily. And make sure you have a lot of hearts. Otherwise you're going to be like me and trying to take him down. Uh, with these little pitiful attacks. Uh, one thing someone said they use the four times invincibility frame combo. Um, you really don't need that. It does help, but there are better combos to take this guy down. And uh, that's really all you need to know about this guy. He's extremely easy, in my opinion. And I don't really see what the problem is with them. Because he goes down pretty fast. But he does have a very cool death sequence as his severed head falls off. Don't know what that purple stuff is. But uh, a reward is we get to press the switch, break that sarcophagus, and grab an MP upgrade. A little unusual, but helpful nonetheless. Very cool. And then the the corpse just disappears and it's gone. It's magic, man, magic. Now we talk to Hugh, and he's just really, uh, bitter. He's extremely jealous, and Nathan's like, Well, bro, I'm just trying to help you out, man. He does this pointing thing, and here come the excuses. Little whiny bitch excuses. I'm sorry, I really do not like Hugh. He's just a whiny little dude. It's like he could help us, but no, he's just gonna be a little dick about it. And he's just all these excuses. I would have said I softened up the guy for you. But no. He blames it on the whip. And decides to walk off like a smug motherfucker. And that's all we'll be seeing of him for a while. And now with these uh, sarcophaguses broken, we can enter the underground gallery. See you then.